Okay, we're back here live at uh, in Las Vegas, the Mandalay Bay. This is IBM's Information on Demand, hashtag IBM IOD. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE, and Wikibon's flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the steely from the noise. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host, Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org, and also big data analyst from Wikibon, Jeff Kelly. Uh, guys, we're gonna just do a breakdown. We had a great lineup this morning. We had uh, um, top executives from IBM. We had some of the top customers. Um, Passionate, articulate, really strong content. But Dave, you know, we've gone to all these events. We just last week in New York City for Big Data NYC where, you know, we had Strata Conference and uh, Hadoop World going on with us and uh, it was a great event. More technical on theCUBE. Here's a little more business. Um, great conversations. You know, we heard things like data flow, um, talking about data economy, talking about the business impact. What's your take so far? Well, John, I mean, it is interesting to juxtapose Big Data NYC and Hadoop World with what we're seeing at IOD. You know, the content here from customers largely coming from, from practitioners, not IT practitioners necessarily, but business practitioners. We had, you know, healthcare professionals, doctors. Um, we just had uh, Nationwide Insurance on, Wes Hunt asked, when, where, Wes, where do you report into IT? No, I report into marketing. So you're seeing clear examples of a line of business executives that are driving big data innovations and driving spending. And that to me is the big difference. That's what IBM's all what, about. What do you think about the, that last year we were here at IOD, we're also here at IBM Edge, the storage group, another IBM event. Uh, we have Pulse coming up, we're going to check that out, event, event out coming, another IBM event. But what I want to get your take, last year at IOD, Information Learning and this year, what's the comparison so far relative to position? Because last year you and I were commenting about it coming together, you know, the disparate parts of IBM, huge asset base, they get a treasure trove of, of, of technology, solutions, and personnel. It's kind of like a combine <laughs> workout. You bring them all together. Uh, what's your take this year from this year in terms of messaging, solution, and just overall? You know, I think in 2010, IBM saw the whole, you know, Hadoop movement. Obviously, I've been participating there, saw all the buzz being generated, and I think it spent 2011 trying to really craft its messaging, its strategy, figuring it out where it fit relative to Smarter Planet. And then last year at IOD, I felt like it was the coming out party for IBM's uh, analytics business, dovetailing with big data. So IBM essentially, purposefully, we heard from Anjul Bombry, purposely tried to go out and create this new category of big data analytics. I think it's clear that IBM has successfully done that, along with others, but IBM has really you know, the first to, to really push those two together. And that's what we saw last year at IOD. I think this year at IOD, now you're seeing the practical application of those efforts, the technology, the services bringing it together, and the business value that's being driven out of those initiatives. You know, I got to say, one of the things I'm really impressed about IBM on is, is that they, they have the same philosophy we have here at theCUBE and on SiliconANGLE is that, you know, when asked about how they're executing in with their customers and their communities, um, you know, David said, we want to align our subject matter experts with our audiences, customer and industry partners. And Dave Laverty said that, yeah. Yeah, David, Dave Laverty uh, said that. And, and that's, that's, that's the key about IBM. They, a lot of people don't know, but they've been blogging as a company going back to the original days. The company is very encouraging of social presence. Um, they're respectful, professional, and so it's, it's, good, it's good to see that. Uh, and Jeff, I want to get your, your take on this because this weaves into my question to you, which is, uh, you know, we were talking about big data analytics, obviously a space you're covering in depth as the leading analyst out there uh, right now. And, um, but you know, one element that IBM is doing here that's interesting that connects it is social business. You don't see a lot of the other events in, uh, tying the social business piece to it, which is essentially the outcome side of it. What, uh, dissect that for us, please. Well, I think they understand, uh, they being IBM, that big data and analytics doesn't live in a silo, and it really is, is critical to get the most out of your big data and your analytics projects to, to infuse those with social capabilities. Uh, big data analytics is inherently a collaborative discipline. Uh, so the idea to bring those two uh, areas together and start to merge those, along with cloud, along with mobile, I mean, you really can't separate any of these out uh, if you're, if, when you're talking about successful deployments inside an enterprise. Um, you know, an isolated big data analytics project uh, that doesn't bring in the collaboration capabilities to allow analytics to be infused throughout your organization, that doesn't bring in the mobile capabilities to really serve customers and serve frontline workers who need analytics, um, you know, where they work or, you know, where they engage with your brand, where they uh, buy services online, whatever the case might be. Um, and then, of course, cloud, 
where a lot of the technology can be complicated, can be complex, um, and in a lot of cases, it makes more sense from a TCO perspective to, to deploy those in the cloud. So you've got to bring all those together. I think IBM is one of the only companies that really gets that full message, and now they're starting to bring that together here at IOD. And you know, to, to, to add on to Dave's response about you know, what's different this year, I think, I think last year, as Dave said, it was much more of a coming out party, um, talking about some of the capabilities. This year, it's all about business value. I mean, we've heard from just you know, halfway through day one, uh, you know, we've heard from customers either on stage or here on theCUBE, Memorial Healthcare, Allied Irish Bank, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Emory University, Nationwide Insurance, Centerpoint Energy, Verizon, Optimal Labs, and, and then there's more. So they are clearly, uh, you know, focused on delivering uh, these capabilities to the enterprise in a way that they can consume them, and they're making it real, and it's, uh, it's encouraging to see. Dave, I want to get your take on this, the rise of social business. You know, when I was co-moderating a panel with Jeffrey Emmel, the CEO of GE, with Vice Chairman of United Airlines, Statoil, Apache, St. Luke's, all these senior executives, the term that came out of their mouth the most was business outcomes. And you know, they're all talking about this new wave of doing things with social data, machine data, human data, et cetera. Um, and how does that tie in from your perspective? Because what we heard today was the classic breaking down the silos kind of narrative, which is, hey, we're now at a point now where we can actually go get data outside, customers can get data outside of their core markets to inject into their real-time or advanced analytics BI systems. It's a fundamental mindset shift plus technology. What's your take on that? You know, where we are, who are the players, how's IBM doing, and what's your take? Well, so a couple things there, John. One is um, a lot of those companies that Jeff just mentioned are the IBM True Blue accounts, and the big question is, how can IBM expand its base beyond its core? Uh, in the crowd chat we had today, that was a, one of the questions that came up with Les Retchen, Anjul Bombry, uh, Dave Laverty, they all were saying that so we, yeah, we're doing that. I would still suspect, John, that 90% of IBM's businesses is, is within this big data analytics business is within their true blue accounts. So your point about social is a really interesting one and the point about you know, the Internet of Things, if you will. These are opportunities for IBM to expand its footprint, and I think social is a means of doing that. You suggested, John, that IBM is actually quite you know, prophetic in social media. Uh, they're doing some really advanced things, and you know, you're seeing them out there. That's an opportunity for IBM to expand their base. The question I have for you is, is it working? Can it work? Can that allow IBM to grow beyond its core base, in your opinion? Well, I mean, Dave, you and I both talk about every, we'd love to riff on this topic, but you know how I, how I feel. Social data and social media is certainly changing. The societal changes around data is enormous. How people are doing things are completely different. Obviously the mobile devices, you know, with the smartphone, we'll, we'll say the iPhone was the, the Macintosh of its generation to create that smartphone movement where the edge of the network in the human sense was connected. Right, so that's, that's one massive driving force um, of society change, which you know, we have crowd chats, we have crowd spots, technology we've built and the blogging, open source content. We're passionate about making information free to change people's lives. Yeah, so let's check that box. To me, you know, we've been harping on that. The big thing that I like right now in this market, in this show, and, and the shows we've gone to is the business changes that are happening because of it. The visualization technology. Um, words like data processing are getting back into the vocabulary. <laughs> you know, decision support systems, old mainframe-like technologies um, and, and languages coming back. And, and that is because the enterprises are being smarter, they're smarter with technology. And I remember, remember the, the term knowledge worker? We heard that this morning uh, from one of the guests, I forget who it said. We didn't want to talk about knowledge workers. That term was so like, overused during the PC revolution. Okay, you can do a spreadsheet. That, I guess, made people more knowledgeable, but now, knowledge worker goes to a 10x level of, of, uh, of impact. You're talking about engaged workforces, people understanding, talking to each other out of band, no controlled models, it's all transparent, democratic, democratization, harnessing the social data, connected systems. This is where I think the data, the big data will shine. So, you know, putting the mobile device in the hands of a worker can make them, in my opinion, a knowledge worker. So I think this concept of knowledge worker will ultimately be the big data aha moment. And we always say the killer app of big data is analytics. So to me, it's very clear the societal changes aside, which we love, the business impact's gonna be the value changes, the instrumentation, but the, the knowledge worker is the guy on the, in the trenches, the girl who's got the analytics going, who's the next Billy Bean Moneyball in the organization. Doesn't have to be data science. So I, I think, you know, clear story, 
last week really hit it home with me. Cher Miller Mulligan, the CEO, ex Aster Data executive, kind of showed the way. I think IBM is going down that path. Well, what I liked about what Cher Miller was saying, she talked about intelligent data harmonization. Now, that's something that you know IBM can do through uh, its portfolio of products, bringing a lot of services. So you're seeing some of these smaller startups trying to innovate and trying to replicate the capabilities of a large, large company like IBM in essentially a, a, a point product, which is what ClearStory has. So it's really interesting to me, John, to again, juxtapose the, the two worlds. You know, we had we heard Abi Meta last week talking about, <clears throat> you know, B, BC before cutting and AC after cutting. I would guess that well over half the people here don't know who Doug Cutting is. I don't know if that's, that's true or not, but I guarantee you that 95% of the people at, uh, at Hadoop World know who Doug Cutting is. Um, but things that, that I think resonate, you know, Merv t told us last week the big story here is choices, and IBM's clearly one of those choices. One of the things we heard last week, interestingly enough, at Hadoop World was the prominence, <clears throat> Jeff Kelly, of IBM's big insights, Hadoop distribution. Mm -hmm. uh, we heard a lot of people surprised at how prominent that, that is in the space, because we're always talking about Hortonworks and Cloudera. Um, and then the other thing we heard last week, which I think is very consistent to what we're hearing here, is big data is challenging conventional thinking regarding how non-analytical business users will be using analytics. That's something that Bill Schmarzo wrote in his, in his recent book. And you're clearly hearing that as a theme here. That, to me, Jeff, is the holy grail of big data. Can, in your opinion, this industry <clears throat> get to the point where big data practitioners uh, are not the only ones using big data, but it's users, it's business users. Isn't that really how this becomes a $200 billion marketplace? Uh, I think you're absolutely right. I think it's, and it's not just uh, a business user with a visualization tool. It's a frontline worker, an operational worker, using applications that are infused with analytics to allow them to make better decisions in real time to do their frontline jobs. And it's applications that m automate systems, automate decision making. Again, infused with analytics, real time analytics that build off historical deep, deep batch type of analytics, infusing those into real time systems to make, uh, make automated decisions. I think those two are really where the, 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 the incredible uh, productivity gains we're going to see are going to happen. It's, there's still a lot of room for that big picture analytics We're using your visualization tool, but automation and infusing analytics into operational applications, I think, is, is one area where you're going to see a potential for a lot, uh, a significant productivity gain. So John, you hear a lot about the, the data-driven dri organization and how it's changing everything. I feel like we're really just scratching the surface. I feel like the disruption is, is, is not come yet anywhere close. Oh, so I think massive disruptions are coming. Yeah, I mean, to me, that you know, Joe Tucci at EMC and um, uh, IBM executives talk about it all the time about the waves of changes, right? And you know, inflection points, client server, PC revolution, client server, made for, all that good history. But the internet now, it's the big data. And to me, I think, Dave. People are just rearranging the deck chairs, in my opinion, on, on what they think the next big 10x change is going to be. You see it in the journalism business. You know, we're not, you and I were talking last night about moves, uh, Yahoo's making with Marissa Mayer. Um, you can rearrange the tech chairs and hire journalists to do tech coverage in another, in another area, and that's the big story. But you can't just move someone around. There's a personnel change. It's, it's like you know, playing a sport differently. And I think the future of work is going to be around collaboration. I think the new generation of workers are going to be like uh, first-person shooter gamers, right? They're going to be like collaborative, connected, communicating. Um, they're going to code Python if they, on some levels. Some are going to be, you know, shake your, your iPhone and get, get big data analytics. Um, so I think the user interface is going to change. So that's going to require new disciplines and, quite frankly, a new career path. So things like machine learning and, and, and things of that nature are going to be the new disciplines. So I think you're going to see a sea change of personnel changes where you're going to see a new type of tech athlete come out of the woodwork and say, okay, that's the new rock star. That's the new kind of profile. That's the new systems analyst. It's not just give me a data scientist because they did some BI and data warehouse work. I think you're going to see, you know, those guys will kind of be in the machinery, kind of you know, pushing buttons, but I think the breakout leadership and, and creation is going to be from the people who are going to look and think differently. I think that's going to be the, the change. And that's going to be guys who can grok math, creativity, user experience, uh, machine learning, things of that nature. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, I think there is a lot of you know, paving the cart path, as, uh, as our friend Paul Gillen might say. But, but, and, but at the same time, right, I mean, there's like some, some, a lot of checkbox items going on. But there's, there's still a lot of 
core disruption coming in industry. So you can, we're going we're gonna to be able to separate the pretenders. You heard, from you the heard pretenders. Fred, Fred talk about Fred, uh, Malboni, Fred Malboni, talk, yeah. talk about how one of his clients, uh, one of the customers, wanted to take $200, $200 million off the ad budget. That was a, okay. that and was then, a great and they, example. And they turned around and made $300 million in, in, in sales that, that Christmas season. That, to me, is the data economy. That's what he says, the data I agree with him. That's the lever. It's like that movie for us old-timers, Jodie Foster, Contact, you know, where she sees that one little guy, you know, hears, that, hears that one little, in the white noise, they hear that one little data, opens up this big plan. Well, and, and what I think, he didn't say, though, John, and, I, and it very well may be happening, he didn't offer it, I, we, we should have followed up with him, but can they now instrument that business such that it, it can deliver those results on an ongoing basis, you know, to, by the minute? Right, to optimize the spend. What, 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 what Fred talked about was, uh, you know, IBM built that model and then presented that model and then made some you know, pretty substantive decisions. Now, the question is, yeah. can they integrate that into the business process? Well, that that's definitely can. I think what you're going to see is you're going to see these use cases. We heard it from uh, his, his service side. We're going to see essentially leveraged use cases that, as you said, code. Remember the old days, oh, best practice is, you know, PowerPoint, PDF file. I think now the best, the best use case is going to be, here's actual code that's leveraged, kind of an open source framework where, you know, the rising tide or stand on the shoulders of the others are before you. You're going to see an open source paradigm around base cases, whether it's pre-canned queries and technology. That's one thing. And that, the, the big data ad budget thing was one. But the other data point that Jim said, Jim, uh, Jim Bachman said, professor at Emory University of Medicine, he talked about the instrumentation of devices in, in, in the ER, right? And he said, there are so many alarms going off. To me, that's the secret in this market, Dave, is to figure out how to extract the signal from the noise, right? So if you have all these alarms going off, if everything's being instrumented, the thing that's the most valuable is what to pay attention to. That's what he was saying. So to me, I think that the insights, the insight side of the business is going to be really the biggest thing. If all these alarms are going off, which one matters? That's a search paradigm. So I think companies like Splunk, IBM have it here with their uh, insights. These are the tech that's going to bring that semantic contextual relevance. Well, so the other thing too that I think gets lost in all this conversation is this is a complicated situation for a lot of customers. How do you do this? You do this with services. I mean, it's really, and who are the companies that can actually implement these types of services? Who has the domain expert? Expertise, the technical expertise, and the implementation chops to get it done. Obviously, IBM does. I would say Accenture. I say this all the time. Accenture, Deloitte, Ernie Young, IBM, PwC. Those are the five that, that have that capability. And there's a lot of smaller companies that that um, are not as prominent, but they may be more local in nature that can you know, get parts of this done. But services is a key piece of the equation that doesn't get talked enough. So folks out there watching, if you're watching theCUBE, this is theCUBE live from IBM in Las Vegas. We're going to have a couple more interviews coming in from round out with the analysts at the end of the day. Ray Wang, Merv Adrian from Gardner, Ray Wang from founder of Constellation, Judy Herworth from Herworth Associates. We're going to get the analysts on here. We're going to break that down. But I want to sh share with you a URL of a crowd chat that we did. Crowd chat is a new crowd activated innovation that was launched by uh, CrowdSpot Inc. It's a crowd chat application platform. New startup that essentially takes the Twitter concept, Twitter chat, and brings it with the LinkedIn and, and Twitter, creates kind of a chat room to the hashtag to the public feed. Go to that chat, it's over now, but you can see the transcript of how it went down. Vote, you can retweet, a lot of great comments in there. And Dave, crowd chats is an example of, of, of social business. I mean, to me, that's a, a, a pristine crowd record. No Storify, no, no manipulation, the record from the conversations. So go to crowdchat.net slash IBM IOD um, and retweet. Um, you can't comment anymore because it's now closed. We'll open up another one later tomorrow. Um, but crowd chat, Dave, is social innovation. To me, that's about getting people together. Um, and you know, the Wall Street Journal had a great article this morning talking about Twitter's value proposition. That's people. And that's the same for IBM. So like in the spirit of IBM, this is social business um, and, and retweet. Well, what I like about it is you get a, a, a number of people who care about a topic together in a, in a place that is not like overwhelmingly noisy, but at the same time is public. So you know, it's, it's a great vehicle. Got some great questions this morning from the crowd chat, from the crowd. Tim Crawford and others, so thank you for that. Jeff, Kelly, quick take on competition. This is obviously IBM's event, a lot of IBM propaganda being spewed around. 
uh, and they're professional about it. They, they don't head fake anyone. We try to have a joke about them having a flash tweet mob. I mean, if IBM had every one of their employees tweet on any topic, <laughs> it would be trending. It would be better, bigger than Justin Bieber. Um, but uh, you know, they're a professional organization. They're not going to do any black hat. But Jeff, talk about the competition. IBM obviously putting a pretty good offering out there. Absolutely. I think uh, when you're talking about kind of an end-to-end -end big data portfolio, both services and products, it's hard to compete with IBM just in terms of the breadth and depth of, of those products and services. Um, but I think the big, long term, the, the big challenge, I think, the big competitor for IBM, or one of the big competitors, is actually going to be Amazon. Um, we, we heard a decent amount of talk today about the cloud, so we know that IBM uh, essentially is, is really is moving everyone from their smart enterprise cloud to their soft layer uh, cloud. And they really made, they made a few announcements today around uh, Blue Acceleration, for example, on uh, the soft layer cloud. I think that going forward is really going to be um, an area to watch. Uh, Amazon versus IBM in this cloud battle for kind of big data analytics. Um, then, of course, on a, on a... That was huge white space for IBM. That's soft layer. Well, Dave, uh, yeah, I, I would... Dave, soft layer. I mean, come on. It's a hosting company. Come on. How, well, real, how real of an acquisition is that? Let's, let's, well, let's be I mean, critical of that acquisition. It's not like $900 million for a hosting company. Well, it still, it was gro it's a growing company, right? It does a lot of bare metal, which probably resonates well with, with some of the workloads that IBM's trying to, to deliver. And it was, like I said, it was a huge gap in IBM's portfolio. They needed that kind of capability to even start to compete for so you think the structure I think if service. they're going to keep their lead, you know, we've cited this market. If IBM is going to keep their lead in the next five, 10 years in this market, they have to build out a, an enterprise grade cloud capability. Otherwise, I mean, that's where big data is going. Is that's where those workloads cloud, are going. Is that just a hosting company? Well, look, it's, they've, they've got a lot of work Rhetorical to do. Rhetorical question, you don't need to answer it. <laughs> um, we're talk, stuck on time right now, we've got our next guest here. Uh, a little midterm uh, analysis here from Dave Vellante and Jeff Kelly. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE. We'll be right back with our next guest here, live in Las Vegas for IBM's Information On Demand. A lot of big, big data analytics, cloud mobile, and obviously social business. We're here covering it. Two days live, exclusive coverage. SiliconANGLE's theCUBE, we'll be right back.